Rob here, and I wanted to produce a video explaining where the hell I've been for the past two or three months, what I'm doing, and what I'm looking forward to. I apologize for the lack of audio quality in this video, as I don't have the, uh, how shall I say this, the uh, privilege, uh, inclinivity, I don't, I don't have the uh, liberty, there we go, to uh, actually stand up and sit at a desk because I broke my left knee in early January, and I've been sitting in this fucking bed, and it is now late March. So we're hoping within the next month here that I will be walking again as my knee continues to fuse. And I am looking forward to some cool stuff here. I don't own a PlayStation 5, but the upcoming game Stellar Blade is still on my radar. It looks like a good polished hack and slash title, and I am just hoping that they release it for Steam within the next year. Some people are saying, oh, they'll do it, and some people say, oh, no, they aren't. With the... Uh, with the incline of Sony right now to put all of their, uh, what do they call them, ex console exclusives on Steam, I am guessing that it's not going to take too long for it to show up on Steam. Now would be a good time to segue into my Steam wish list. With the gaming industry and AAA developers laying people off, firing people, and generally going down the drain, I wanted to know if this was truly the end and if there was any hope for video games. And the answer turns out to be, and I'm not surprised, yes. This is a wonderful time for gamers to have a variety in their diet. Taking a look at my wish list on Steam, there's over 80 titles, but only 10% of them are AAA games, and most of them weren't released in 2024. I also wanted to add a quick note that video game prices are increasing. Infamously, Ubisoft says, oh, we're a quadruple-A gaming company now. Yeah, right. But they've increased their price to $69.99. So we're going to do a little bit of math and a little bit of interest here. And don't worry, I used a calculator. Uh, my brain got fried in college. Anyways, so back in 1996, 1997, my parents took me out to a Toys R Us in Maryland and said, okay, Rob, the new Nintendo 64 is out. You get to pick between one of these two games that you really want. You could either get Mario 64 or you could get Zelda Ocarina of Time. I'm like, God damn, in retrospect. But I went with Ocarina of Time. But back then, the game cartridges were $49.99, and slowly the price has been creeping up. So in 1996, $49.99 United States dollars in 2024 is actually about 97 U.S. dollars. So it would hit us back then, the equivalent today of $97. So when I looked at that data, uh, I hate to say it, but there's a little bit of justification for their price increase, especially because AAA titles are becoming much more expensive to produce. And, excuse me, when a developer says, well, I can't afford to make this, my simple uh, reply would be, cut your costs. The last AAA game I purchased, if you could say from software as a AAA developer, was Armored Core 6, and I still need to get into that game. It's in my backlog. But other than that, I can't recall any major AAA titles that I have purchased in the recent past, recent couple of years. No, actually, there was Spyro the Dragon uh, Reignited Trilogy, so that was a remake. I don't know whether you want to count that or not, and I still need to finish that one as well. It's a really good remake. So when you have AAA titles like, what was it, Forsaken? And uh, what was the other one? Just, uh, Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. A couple of others are either tanking or stuff's not working out for the AAA developers. What are you going to do? It seems like there's doom and gloom for the uh, gaming industry. Viva la revolution de indie games. I've been getting into boomer shooters lately. I'm playing Project Wingman again. I'm working on the Spyro trilogy about to finish the first game. I've never played the second or third Spyro games. Uh, Road Redemption, which is a spiritual sequel to Road Rash. And believe it or not, Hot Wheels is a lot of fun. Other than the Spyro Reignited trilogy, none of those games really cost above $20. That's the wonderful thing about Steam is things go on sale all the time, and you can get some decent indie games from developers you've never heard of to ones that friends may recommend to you. And I have a growing catalog that just happens to be the majority indie games, and they're really starting to pour their hearts out into their projects. They just don't have a big studio as like, I don't know, Santa Monica, Sony, Bungie, Microsoft, whoever. That don't necessarily mean that they're going to suck. 
Larian Studios just dropped a huge bomb, and they've proven to other industry leaders that people still want to play single-player games. Baldur's Gate 3 was released. Now, I'm not really the type of person to get into a game like Divinity, Original Sin, or Baldur's Gate, but I do understand the importance that it has for some people, and without a doubt, it's been selling like hotcakes. It's still at the top of the Steam top seller list. I've been playing video games now for over 30 years, and I've been watching the industry a little bit closely for the last 10 to 12 years, and really it's going in a direction that I don't like. And that route is with two things, microtransactions and a live service model. I'll get into that briefly. Whenever you have to sign a EULA for a video game or a software program, it's standing for End User License Agreement, it usually says somewhere in the fine print that you don't own the game or the rights to the game, well, no shit, Sherlock, and that we could revoke your license at any time and your copy will basically be bad. A lot of these corporate dipshits and disc jockeys want to keep going that way and instead offer a living, breathing, live service that's updated every once in a moon, yada, yada, yada. Now, it's really a uh, it's really a saying for bend over, here it comes again, and they're taking control of what you purchased back into their house. I mean, sure, if they wanted to revoke the license from before, at least I have a physical copy of the game, and if it had a single-player mode, I could play it and possibly multiplayer with a local area network or a split screen. But when you have to go into a streaming service for these types of things or sign on to the internet for their network, they got you by the balls, man. And these major corporate game developers are not shy about where they stick their members. I want to play the game that I purchased, and I want the content from the get-go, meaning I have to go and earn it, not purchase it with real-world money. Pardon my French, but microtransactions and all this horseshit are fucking up the industry. And it's fucking up our hobby, and it needs to stop. Unfortunately, it's not going to because of the whales spending so much money on this shit. And people just keep buying it they keep buying the same madden year after year after year what, what are they really changing just a, maybe a couple of game modes uh flipping a guy's hat around and making different rosters it's just like come on man it, it, it's completely unnecessary but the game developers are going to tell you otherwise who's lost their meaning for existence the big game developers the trend nowadays, and the trend's been like this we've been talking about this for 10 years now is that everything's going to start going all digital you could go the route of the argument that, sure, it's cheaper to make, but as we've been seeing in the uh, the home movie industry and the video game industry, that these developers, these programmers or whatnot, these marketing people, they're starting to take property that you purchased with your money away from you so you can no longer watch or play it. And that's all because of the end-user license agreement I talked about earlier. You don't own the game. You own the privilege to access this information and we have to take it and we are going to take it away from you because well maybe our license is expired we forgot to feed the cat it's just fucking bullshit and i'm telling you right now i am not going to have any of it period that's it for now this video has gotten longer than i really wanted it to be it's going to go over valheim they're looking like they're going to release the ashlands here in probably two or three months have something new to do in valheim when I do get back up on my feet and off these crutches, I do want to continue uploading the videos, uh, finishing the Fallout 4 uh, mod series that I've been playing, and then get to work on some new series. It's what I do. So thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and I hope to see you next time.